Hello everyone, my name is Mohamed Azmal, I'm the founding engineer of iMesh and in this session we'll be having a look at MTLS with Z-Tunnel in Istio Ambient Mesh. Let's have a look at the underlying applications that we'll be deploying. So I'm running a local kind cluster which is a two node setup and in node 1 we'll be having namespace 1 and in node 2 we'll be having namespace 2 respectively. Each of the namespace will have three application, the sleep, not sleep and an echo server pod. The echo server is basically the one we'll be querying, so it can just echo back some HTTP response so we can see if it's working or not. And using the sleep and not sleep or we'll simply curl it, whether it is in namespace 1 or namespace 2. Since this is going to be an ambient mesh uh, uh, enabled uh, uh, cluster, you can see that each of the nodes is going to have the Z-tunnel. And if you want to query from namespace 1 to namespace 2, and the communication is going from one node to the other, it will pass through the Z-tunnel. And uh, the Z tunnel traffic will be entirely MTLS encrypted. We'll have a look at that as well. And we'll also have a look at uh, how to apply L4 authorization policies. Let's get started. Let's have a look at the uh, YAML files that we'll be using. So uh, it's pretty standard. The resources for namespace one are going to be, I'm creating a namespace. I'm having a service account for the echo service. And uh, I have a service for an echo server and the deployment respectively. Same thing is there for uh, the sleep server as well. One thing to notice is that while we are deploying these uh, uh, deployments, I have also uh, made a node selector and I've given it a name of node one. I've already labeled my node. So I'm ensuring that all the uh, uh, deployments that are there in namespace one are being deployed to node one. And the same thing over here in namespace two. The YAML files are pretty simple. Uh, this, this is the same sleep, not sleep and echo. Uh, server YAML file that you find in the Istio uh, sample. So this is something which we'll be deploying into the uh, cluster. Let's have a look at the cluster. So uh, let's see what all things we have. Right now you can see I don't even have the Istio system namespace. We do not have Istio installed. Uh, and either the applications are running here. But uh, one thing to notice since I'm running a local uh, kind cluster, you can see that we are having uh, three pods, one for the control, uh, sorry, uh, three containers. One is having uh, the control plane and other two are the worker nodes where we'll be deploying the application. So ambient worker is essentially node one and ambient worker two is essentially node two. Uh, let's just uh, exec into those uh, nodes. Ambient worker. Okay. And I'll do the same thing for uh, node 2. I'm doing this because we'll be uh, having a TCP dump here so that uh, we can have a look at the traffic that is coming, whether it is MTLS encrypted or uh, not, all those things we'll be able to see here. I'm looking for port 80 and uh, port uh, 15,008 port 80 being the general port and port 15008 is what the Z tunnel uses to securely communicate with other Z tunnel that uh, using the HTTP, uh, HTTPS secure tunnel okay, uh, with the HBone protocol. I'll do the same thing here as well. Okay. So right now we don't have anything. We do not even have our application. Let's go ahead and deploy both the application. So So everything is running in namespace one and uh, everything is also running in namespace two. Nice. So what we'll be doing is we'll be now communicating with namespace two. Uh, uh, the way we'll be doing is the sleep pod of namespace one will make a curl command to the echo server in the namespace two. So I've already have uh, the command here, so I don't need to type it out. Uh, it's basically just exec uh, into the sleep of NS1 and make a curl command to echo server of NS2. So let's have a look at that. And once I hit enter, yep, it's working. We are having uh, the appropriate response here. And if you go to the TCP dump, you can see that the traffic is also open. Uh, everything is printed here. It's nothing is encrypted. Even both the cases, you can see it's there. So, uh, so right now we are uh, having the application, but it's of no use because it's uh, we don't have Istio. We haven't 
label the namespace uh, to uh, be taken into the history ambient image this is something which we'll be doing next so let's have a look at that uh, how we are going to install istio and how we are going to uh, enable these namespaces to be a part of the ambient mesh so we'll be using this istio ctl command to install the istio so uh, what it is exactly is that uh, we are saying that install the istio and use the profile ambient this is uh, to uh, install the ambient mesh profile uh, basically the all these eternal istio cni related to ambient mesh will be installed if you use this profile we are also setting that we want the ingress gateways to be enabled however this is optional i mean it's nothing to be uh, you know mandatory and i'm just uh, skipping the confirmation so once i paste this command it's going to install istio okay. might take some time and uh, it's pretty quick for me i think okay so the installation is done and uh, let's have a look at what we have in the istio system namespace so you can see we have the istio cni for each of the nodes since we have the uh, two worker nodes and one control plane we have that we do have the ingress gateway the istio d node uh, istio d pod and the three z tunnel pods for each of the uh, nodes that we have let's have a look at the pods Uh, you can see that the z tunnel is uh, one of the z tunnel is running in ambient worker one of the uh, z tunnel is also running in ambient worker 2 and the ambient control plane so uh, this is basically uh, the z tunnels deployed in each of the particular nodes now uh, even if we are done with it and if we come here and we again uh, query the application let's see if uh, anything has changed but see that nothing has changed uh, we are again getting the traffic that is not encrypted not mtls enabled and everything is just as it is because the applications that we have deployed uh, in different namespaces are not uh, uh, you know enabled uh, for the istio ambient mesh to put uh, any action upon so what we will be doing is we will be labeling the namespaces so we will use kubectl label ns in case this case ns1 to be istio.io slash data plane mode equal ambient uh, like in traditional istio sidecar based service mesh you are having an istio injection enabled in this case we need to uh, label the namespace to have data plane mode ambient the same thing i'll be doing to uh, the namespace too now both of the namespaces are into the service mesh and let's try to exec uh, again we are getting the relevant response no change over there but if you come here you can see the entire traffic is mtls encrypted this is again uh, everything is encrypted so the communication is in you know uh, it's applying the mtls through z tunnels okay let's have a look at the z tunnel logs as well uh, so let's have a look at this z tunnel log kubectl You can see that it is uh, the XDS service is running for service discovery, and here we are having the uh, info as outbound. It is saying that okay, it use uh, and you can see here it is proxying whatever is coming to port eighty. This is basically the IP of our application, and it's using the Hbone protocol to uh, you know expose it through port fifteen thousand eight, which will be again uh, uh, you know uh, being carried out in. The other z tunnel where it will be listening on port 15008 uh, let's log that as well that is i think in ambient worker 2 okay here you can see the traffic is an in inbound because the request is coming inside the z tunnel and it is also having the peer ip and uh, the spiffy id of our particular sleep service uh, that was applied here so you can see this this is the z tunnel in action we have the mtls enabled everything is working out of the box now let's have a look at the authorization policies that we'll be applying so uh, there are two authorization policies that will apply first is the default one which is the deny all so if you simply create uh, the authorization policy crd and you have just provided the metadata regarding which namespace to apply it on what is the name of uh, this particular authorization policy by default it will block all l4 requests so if you apply the 
uh, let's see that I dash F deny all then it doesn't matter if I'm communicating with echo uh, the sleep server I'll get a uh, termination uh, even if I'm trying to communicate within the namespace I'll get a termination and uh, yeah this is you can see that how how is it going to work uh, let's try with something like not sleep and you're getting uh, the terminated so by default all the uh, traffic is blocked if you don't have anything in the operation policy body but however you can uh, allow certain traffic so say for example if i want to allow communication to the echo server ns2 from uh, the sleep service of uh, ns1 this is the authorization policy that i need to apply so first we have the inside the specification we have a selector that matches the label for which particular uh, application you want to apply uh, this particular uh, uh, authorization policy so in this case we are selecting the echo server application in ns2 and then we have an action so uh, the action here it can be anything it can be custom it can be deny or it can be allowed so if you have set it to custom the precedence is uh, first it will evaluate the custom uh, action then it will evaluate the any denial policies if it's there and at last the allow policies will be applied okay so uh, we won't be looking at custom we'll be looking at allow in this case because we have uh, by default denied everything so the evaluation is like if if you have a custom action it will first evaluate it whether to allow or deny it and if you have a deny action it basically means just deny so nothing uh, fancy over there so uh, if you do not provide any allow action basically if you skip the action altogether by default it will allow all the traffic and since we are using allow here it will allow all the traffic anyways okay and at last it will deny everything if you don't have the entire specification at all which we have seen here okay for the both the namespaces so in this case uh, this will be applied to ns2 because the echo server application is in ns2 that's why we are giving this namespace and we are also giving the name to this authorization policy and inside that we have rules now rules is a list of rules you can add uh, in each rule you have a from you have a to and you have an option okay uh, or, or sorry uh, you have a which so the from is basically it will help you uh, choose whatever sources you want in this case we only have one source that is the sleep service uh, from ns1 the two is basically what all uh, uh, operations you are going to allow so you might allow get request post request put request however those things are in the uh, l7 policies will maybe we'll have a video regarding the l7 policy separately but since this one is focused purely on the l41 we won't be having a look at that and in where you can also verify uh, 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 the uh, you know you can have headers and all stuff like that so it, the syntax would be something like will we have a two block here you have put something and then you have a where uh, you're checking for headers maybe checking for something like tokens and all you can do it here okay so let's apply this and see if uh, we are able to communicate uh, from service uh, sleep service in namespace one to the echo service in namespace two. Sorry. Ah, oh, my bad. Okay. Ah. Uh, yeah, should work now. So now, if I try to exec from the not sleep pod to the echo server of namespace two, I'll still get the denied. Uh, uh, uh communication terminated message uh, if i try to echo uh, uh, communicate with any other namespace or any other services and uh, maybe let's try something from sleep that is inside namespace 2 and see if that works and uh, okay and maybe i don't have a sleep deployment in ns2 oh sorry i forgot to change the namespace yeah yeah this one is also being blocked and finally let's check if the rule is applied correctly if the sleep uh, uh pod from namespace one is able to uh, communicate and yeah it works you can see only the sleep uh, uh, one is able to communicate with echo server in ns2 so this is a, a glimpse of how to use istio ambient mesh how to apply l4 uh, policies how to use authorization policies to deny l4 uh, traffic allow l4 traffic from specific uh, principles by the way this is uh, more like the spiffy id that we have uh, the identification uh, that you would have seen in the uh, z tunnel logs so we are simply saying from cluster.local we are specifying the namespace and then we are specifying the service account which is associated with this leap service okay so yeah i uh, hope uh, this would help you all uh, thank you very much